Hello once again, I'm Cliff Hall from Cortex with another snack video. In this edition, I'll show you how user-friendly it is to conduct a physical inventory in Acumatica 6.1. The first thing we want to do is define our physical inventory cycles. Here you can see that we already have three of them set up for annual, monthly, and quarterly, but we can define our own by clicking the plus sign. Where these come into play is under physical inventory types. On the generation method, you could choose cycle count which will allow you to be able to pull which cycle counts you want to have. In this case, maybe we do an annual, monthly, quarterly, or the one we've defined just a moment ago in our setup. Instead, let's choose an example. This one will be by items. In our example by items, we can first select the selection method list of items. We could also look at random items, items having negative book quantity, or last count on or before a particular date. In this case, we're going to choose a list of items. Down below, I've already chosen all the items that begin with AAC. And the way that was done was by clicking the Add button, which allows me to start inventory, ending inventory. When I click Add, all of those items show up on the screen as such. I'm going to just choose the warehouse location selection and just use the warehouse wholesale. And under assignment order, I'm going to take the defaults, but these can be changed to fit how you'd like to actually do your physical inventory. The next step is to prepare the physical inventory count. Here, we're going to choose the item ID that we had set up before under physical inventory types. We're going to go ahead and do it for warehouse wholesale only, generation method by inventory with a list of items. Notice that the list of items we had before have already shown up here and will show up by every location in that particular warehouse called wholesale. We can also go to the location selection if we want to in some cases. In this case, because we chose the inventory location or warehouse itself, this is disabled. By clicking on generate PI, this basically freezes the inventory that you're going to count. And while that's going on, no transactions will happen. However, after the count has taken place, then normal business transactions can continue. And the reason why is that after we've frozen inventory, the valuation changes or the value uh, quantity changes will be applied as a delta later on. So that normal business processes can continue. After generating the physical inventory, the next thing we want to take a look at is the physical count sheets. Go ahead and click the one that we have, number seven, which just created and run that report. What this does is it gives the people taking the inventory the ability to go ahead and enter the physical quantity on hand. Sometimes we'll want to remove the book quantity so that they have nothing to compare it to and just enter physical quantity. In this example we left that on so we can see the difference. So the person would go ahead and write in here physical inventory that they actually count. Once the count sheets are filled out, the next thing is for the inventory physical count to take place. So while pulling up that reference number, we're gonna go ahead and put in the physical quantity. In this case, wherever it was negative, we'll put zero, because obviously we can't have negative quantity on hand for real. And in this case, we had 58 on the book quantity, we added 59, so it's a variance of one. And down below, we had 20 here, but we only counted 19, so there's a negative one variance here as well. Once the physical inventory count is done, and everybody feels they have entered the correct information, the next thing to do is have the supervisor of the physical inventory take a look at the physical count variance preview. This gives us an idea of what actually cost and what the variances were based on the entry that we've done. Once that is correct, we'll go ahead and take a look at the physical inventory preview screen itself, which shows all the counts and what the variances are. The screen also allows you to take care of any adjustments that need to be made based on the count. Perhaps one of the counts was incorrect, could be adjusted here as well. After this is done, to actually put the physical inventory into place and update inventory, we would click Complete PI. Upon completing PI, we can click on the adjustment information and see the actual batch number that hits the general ledger. These are the adjustments that were made. It's actually an um, inventory adjustment screen and the financial details would be here. After this is done, let's take one last look at our inventory valuation report to see what changes were made. In this case, under R1S1, we changed from 58 to 59, so that's an increase of one. And down below, we changed from 20 to 19, so that's a change of negative one, both for AA comp UT01. So let's take a look at that. The inventory valuation report, we've chosen the part number we want to take a look at, the warehouse, and the format. 
by clicking Run Report, we should see the changes that were from today, so October 2nd, and you see the adjustments right down here. Too many systems that can't get along? Time to change Documatica. One system, one solution. Find out more at Cortex.com.